Our first guest tonight became a household name on Saturday Night Live, playing everyone from President Bush to the church lady, and either Hans or Franz, I'm still not exactly sure. You can hear him and David Spade reminisce with SNL cast members and hosts on their weekly podcast, Fly on the Wall. New episodes premiere Wednesdays. Please welcome Dana Carvey. <laughs> I didn't expect you. that. I can't believe I've never met you. I've never I know, been here. Everyone I know knows you, and they love you. And I go, well, why? Why do you love me? I mean, what's the big deal? You know? Yeah. And uh, no, I can't wait to hear that the was my first this. joke. <laughs> no, I just all those years, you know, I was raising my kids up in the woods in Northern California. Yeah. And I knew Jay Leno from the club, so I would just perfunctorily go on his show. He I would see. call me a lot at home. You know, you, you come on, you do your stuff, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you know, we got a good show down there in Burbank. Maybe you come down for a while, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, you know, Dave uh, gets the money, I get the numbers, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, I did, you know. Yeah. So then Conan, who I met when he came out of college, uh, you know, I started doing his show. But now there were times I was booked, and then they said you were dark. And I go, what is he depressed? I didn't understand. <laughs> Let me on the show. But now it's the greatest show Dana, in Hollywood. I Dana, love this. You know that. <laughs> It's well, this, like, is, this is just an awesome. It's not like a marriage. You're allowed to do the other shows, but in any event, I'm thrilled that you're here. It is uh, thank you. Really, I just a great got a look at me. I go, oh, this is me at. Uh, <laughs> you know. you I love it. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm mature now. Yeah, but you look like exactly the same, except you have more hair on your face. Really. I know. Well, the women like this. I mean, my wife got tired of having sex with Howdy Doody at a given point. <laughs> I had a baby face for a long time, and it didn't help the bedroom. But they like to scruff. You're not a girl. You know, your uh, your co-host, your pal David Spade, was here. Oh, I think yeah, a couple of David. months ago. Yes. And we're talking about this podcast you guys do together. Fly on the wall, me and David Spade. I've Which known is him for a years. great idea for a podcast. It's a seminal experience in people's lives. No matter where you went before, or after being on live television in New York on that show, just you never forget it. It's so weird. You have people who hosted the show. You have people yeah. who worked on the show. Mm -hmm. Do you have ever have people who are just in the audience on the show? What you mean? Oh, we, we would. I, yeah. I think we'll branch out. We would like have fans on. Because that's the, the extent of my uh, Saturday Night Live experience. You never it's hosted? Oh no 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 no. I'll because Jay Lauren Leno Michael. wouldn't allow it. He was busy. <laughs> Jay did it once. I said, Lauren, how about Jimmy? Oh, I, I don't know. Does he do any characters? <laughs> I think he would. But I love working with Spade. I've known him since he's 19. I raised him as one of my own. And, uh, he said you guys lived together for a while. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he is such a sound effect machine. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Woo. <laughs> uh, we lived in Beechwood Canyon in a really dumpy place. My wife and I lived uh, on top of the garage. There wasn't even a roof. We were just up there. No, it was, uh, it was a hot plate. And I got on SNL freakily. We were living in a dump, my wife and I, to save money to buy a house. And I got on SNL. And then Kevin Nealon, I'm out in New York, and they said, well, we could use, this is Lauren Michaels. We could use one more cast member, maybe someone like Chevy, who's sort of tall. That's what he said. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I said, I know a really funny tall guy. And then <laughs> Kevin came in the studio. He scored. He got the show. And Whoa. Spade moved into our little brother from another mother, moved into uh, Kevin Nealon's room. And then when Kevin was so nice, he'd come back from SNL, and Spade would still take his room. He'd sleep on the couch. Unbelievable. Sorry, buddy. Got a snooze and a boo. <laughs> I'm just going to do Spade all Yeah, I like that. But, does, does, David, so does David like it when you imitate him? David is very chill about anything. I mean, uh -huh. he's very gentle and very chill. All does right. anyone imitate you? Does, does, no one no. can do me. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like an invisible person. I don't really have a face, and I don't really have a voice. I don't really exist as a human being. <laughs> That's why the scruff and the glasses, I need infrastructure. My face is... I'm like the invisible man. My face is receding into my skull, so I need, <laughs> I need scaffolding. But that way you can put stuff on me. Like John Lovitz, the great John Lovitz. Uh -huh. they'd ha he'd be on SNL and he's... No, hold on. Everyone needs to applaud or John's going to be John very upset. 
Hey, right? I mean, hello. <laughs> he'll he'll call me tomorrow. To hear him? <laughs> they applauded. But anyway, John. <laughs> John is a true character, and he would they put prosthetic makeup on him on Saturday Night Live. He'd come up to me and go, can, can you tell who it is? <laughs> yes, John, I can. But I'm a very, I can just, just put something on me, put a nose, a thing, a face, give me an accent. It is remarkable. It really is amazing, this, well, the stuff that you do. And, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and the Sorry, president's, sleeping in there. What was the first president you did? Were you a kid when you started um, being president? Yeah, I, I, like, as a very little kid, I remember doing a little bit of JFK. We don't do it because it's easy. We did it because it's hard. You know, that was an easy <laughs> entry. I did LBJ a little bit, but that really? sounds like Clinton. I was a little performer kid, you know, wow. also introverted. And then I did Reagan. Everyone did Reagan. Well, yes. What would Reagan do with Ukraine? What do you, what do you, do, what do, what do you want to do, Mr. President? Well, I say fire away <laughs> with everything we've got and then call them and see if they're still there. <laughs> it's not the best Reagan. But it's very Reagan. It's a Reagan. Yeah. And then, flukily, I got cast as the president. So I did George Bush Sr., mm -hmm. which took me a year. I couldn't do it at all initially. Really? You know, because there was nothing there. It was just, hi, I'm a president. How are you? <laughs> and then I, you know, so I had to invent a character and extenuate it. And I started just watching him, and he would do this thing of, well, we're out there kind of careful, doing that thing out there in that whole area. And that was Al Franken and I were like, we got it, that's it. Yeah. Doing that thing, that area. And then four years later, I'm just like, gotta do it, education. You know, I'm just <laughs> mugging it up. It's yeah. interesting because I think for a lot of people, and probably myself included, the whoever like is doing the president on Saturday Night Live, like that is the president. Yes, that's, you think that's, that's them. the bully pulpit for a, co a comedian. If yeah. you have that spot, like James Austin Johnson does now. Yeah. Oh, he does Trump he, on Saturday Night Live. He does yeah. a brilliant Trump. He does. He was on our Fly on the Wall podcast in Austin. Oh, James okay. Austin Johnson was. In. Yeah. Well, and sure. You what I did was because I'm kind of fascinated by. I, I realized because I wanted. You know, I said that Trump can really talk. I saw him earlier on your show, but, and oh, he doesn't say anything. It's just he has these weird phrases, and so I had James do them. Can I do a couple yeah, of them for sure, you? Yeah, sure, sure. So it's Trump with no real sentence structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Frankly, let me tell you, you're gonna be seeing a lot of it. That I can tell you. I mean, when you look at it and you look, it didn't work out so great for so many of these people, and you're seeing it all over the place. Many people are saying, we don't want, we're not those people. We don't do that, okay? <laughs> so you look at what they're, what they're doing, you look at all of it, and people are very disappointed, like you wouldn't believe, <laughs> because it's a terrible deal, a really a bad deal, and we're gonna be doing something very soon, and you're gonna be happy. You're gonna be seeing a lot of it. You're gonna be happy like you wouldn't believe. That's, that's Trump. <laughs> I got Dana Carvey. Unbelievable. We're right back with Dana after this. <laughs> We're back with Dana Carvey. He's got a podcast with David Spade called Fly on the Wall. They yeah. are uh, focused on Saturday Night Live. They yeah. have the, the people from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, we are one of our great writers, Jim Downey's episode was uh, today. We, you know, we've had Bill Hader. That's a great one. Jim Downey for yeah. like the comedy nerds. That's a real, that's an exciting one. One of the greatest writers in the history of Saturday Night Live or anywhere. And he also, when I did the George Bush Sr. thing, uh, he was, kind of my right-hand man, it was Franken and him. So I had two really brilliant people helping me with that impression. Isn't is it strange now to think like, yeah, I had a guy who was a senator from Minnesota writing jokes for me. I know, and Al was always really political and he informed those sketches because he was totally steeped in politics and knew every angle. And, but we were, you know, it was kind of an equal opportunity thing. When Bush was riding high, his ratings were like 70%. We just played him as this happy guy who couldn't lose. You know, well, things are going up. Before Bush, Berlin Wall. After Bush, no wall. So it was kind of like, the joke was how great he was doing, and then it got rougher later. You know. I want to ask about something that's not related to Saturday Night Live, and in fact, Any, it's anything. a sitcom you did in 1982. Oh, now, no. this is quite a lineup. It's called uh, <laughs> One, One of, the, of boys. the Boys. Nathan Lane and Mickey Rooney, a famous human being. And that's you, yeah. And, and that's, that's me. Yeah. And. Mickey Rooney is Man. really... Now, Nathan Lane is one of these people you meet and you go, oh, that's the greatest person I've ever met in my life. This what? the funniest, yeah. naturally funniest, and Mickey loved Nathan. Did what? he? Wasn't so sure about me. Is Mickey, that right? Mickey was the craziest 
person I've ever met. I mean, yeah. brilliant, but he had a 38 revolver and he'd wave it around. <laughs> I'm not kidding, he would. They're not gonna get me. <laughs> if they come for me, I'll plug them. You know, I mean, he was out of his mind. He, he was. literally, you'd be coming down the hallway and he said this every day to, to, about his former glory. I was the number one star in the world. <laughs> and then he would go, you hear me? Bang. The world. <laughs> and you can't write it. You can't you know what, write it. What makes it even funnier is I think we all, uh, you know, growing up, you think of Mickey Rooney as like this old man, you know, whatever. But I looked it up today, and in this, that, in this photograph, Mickey was only 62 years old. So <laughs> he'd already lost his marbles completely. Well, the, the, the connection here, why we're bringing this up, is because I was just just a fledgling stand-up, got a very small deal with NBC. They called me and they said, we want you to play Mickey Rooney's grandson. Where is it tape? In New York, in Rockefeller Center. So I ended up working in Rockefeller Center on the sixth floor, and on the eighth floor was Saturday Night Live. And I would ask a stage, and I would get up there on Thursdays, and I'd sit in the bleachers, and I would watch Eddie Murphy, and I'd watch Joe Piscopo rehearse. And I was wow. thinking, damn, I really, really want to get up two floors. Wow. And it took me six years, and then I ended up there. And so it's surreal. Did you go, it's not, it's not weird. Did you go straight from the sixth floor to the eighth floor, or did you make a stop at the, on the seventh along the way? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I went to the 17th, I think. And I went down to the eighth like you wouldn't believe it. Didn't work out. <laughs> Many people are saying, I can tell you that, I can promise you that, you gotta be happy, Jimmy. But. Um, <laughs> I think that life is like that. Is the longer you live, all these different cycles and circles, and just sort of ironic, weird, bizarre stuff happens. To so me, that it's crazy movie. that it took anyone that long to figure out that you would be fantastic on Saturday Night Live. Isn't I, that strange if you think about it? I mean, objectively. Well, you know, I was developing stand-up on the side, but you could see by that picture, I was really cute at that age. Yeah, you were so you were like I a Dorothy very, Hamill so, type. I yeah, think. yeah, I had the page yeah. boy. Yeah. So I, I kept being cast as the innocent nice guy, and I didn't have the confidence to turn it down. You know, mm -hmm. I go, okay, I'll be that. And I didn't, you know, like uh, other people would just say, no, I'm gonna be the king of, of comedy. But mm -hmm. I was too, and I did Blue Thunder with James Ferentino. Um, I was in the helicopter, I was Clinton Wonderlove, and I had lines like, I'm jamming, I'm jamming, you know. <laughs> My name was Jaffo, and he was not having a good time in life. He had a styrofoam cup this big and the fake chopper. So he went to do something, so I wanted to take a sip of water, it was straight vodka. <laughs> And cocaine, and he was just out of his mind, just yelling at people. I was there. It was like Mickey Rooney again. I work with some you nutballs. <laughs> so, but at one point, one point in time, they offered me a spinoff to Punky Brewster, the '80s sitcom called Fenster Hall. Oh wow! This was like '84, five, and I said to my wife, it was thirty thousand dollars to do, that, do it, and I said, no, I, I'm not gonna do it anymore, and I just went on the road, I just went all out with stand-up, and that's where Chopped Broccoli came, Church Lady came. Wow. And so by the time I met up with Lorne Michaels, when he saw me, I was, I was there, you know, but I, it took me a long time, because I didn't, to be on television was so outrageous for me where I came from, you know, seven of us were right. in the bathroom, dad was a high school teacher, I just like, that's like saying you're gonna be the first man on the moon. So it took me a while to believe it, like I'm gonna be one of those guys on TV? Yeah. No, that cat, get out of town. So, but it, it worked out for me, I feel very yeah, I, lucky. Yeah, it worked out for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for being here, I hope you will come again soon. We're gonna, um, by the way, we have Science Bob, speaking of teachers, is gonna yes. come do some yeah. uh, demonstrations. Would mm -hmm. you, can you stay for that? You know, I, I, this, is, I, this is weird, but I'm actually having dinner with David Spade. Oh, so, okay, all so right. I gotta go, yeah. All right, oh, well, get David if I turn him down, he'll be like, Boop. Yeah, right, you don't wanna get the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dana Gardner, anyway, new thank episode you so much. of Fly in the Wall with Spade from New Wednesday. We'll be back with Science Bob. If you like that video, click subscribe and we'll be together until one of us dies.